In honor of our upcoming bow making class, I wanted to show off one of the tools that makes it a whole lot easier to do that, and that's this bow vise. Bow making really doesn't uh, require a lot of tools, but this is one that really makes it a whole lot easier. Uh, there's lots of designs, but this is a simple one we put together for less than 30 bucks, and it's really easy uh, to get going. Once you have your stave uh, roughed out, either with the axe or bandsaw, however you want to do it, uh, you could put it right uh, on top here through the loop, and let me show you how this clamping feature works. We put these pegs to kind of limit the side-to-side -side movement, but uh, this will clamp down real easily. This bow has a little bit of reflex, um, so we'll take that, that out as we clamp it through. So we have the ropes, we have this board uh, that goes underneath the ropes, and you can kind of see how this clamp is uh, taking shape now. And you see as I push down on this, the bow is uh, being brought to the board uh, so it won't move anywhere. But in order to keep that the way that we need, we put a chalk in here, and this could be a 4x4, this could be a log, this could be whatever you, you had available. And again, you don't need this uh, for, for making a bow. You could do it while you're standing up. This makes it a whole lot easier. So when you're rasping on it, taking, taking the material off uh, so that the bow will bend, that your, your bow stays straight and uh, it doesn't wobble around. You get a little bit of wobble out of this thing, but that's probably because we're on a slant, but um, and, you know, as you rasp and start to take off material, this really does a huge job in uh, holding your bow and, um, and uh, making it a whole lot easier. They call the vise uh, the third hand uh, for old uh, hand tool woodworkers, and it's because it was just so such an essential piece of tooling in the shop. So today, uh, in honor of our bow making class, we're going to show you how to make this cheap and very simple uh, bow horse. Stay tuned. So the key to having a sturdy table is having sturdy legs. And the way we do that for this bow horse is we utilize these uh, sawhorse brackets available at pretty much any home improvement store. Uh, when you put your legs in, they clamp onto a board and give you a sturdy, uh, sturdy rest. Um, we got these for about eight bucks at Lowe's, and it comes two to a pack. So this is all we're going to need to build this to build this horse or at least the base. And this is really important for the portability of this project. You don't want to have a huge thing. So you can take it down, take the legs off, pack it in your car, go to where you need to. So there's lots of, this is where a little bit of customization comes in on your part. Uh, it depends on how high you want to be uh, working on this thing. You don't want to be lunged over rasping on uh, your hickory stave. So um, you want to bring this up. A good way to do, uh, they say for uh, carpenter's benches and things is to um, stand with your, your arms at your side and measure up to your wrist height. And that's kind of a good working start. From there you can, if you got a table or something to figure out what's really comfortable for you, you can uh, lay some wood to, uh, on your table to give a little more distance and start working on it. And then you can say, oh, do I, do I like standing at this height? Do I want to be a little bit lower? And you can adjust that way. Um, the, the boards that we got are some nice uh, number two uh, prime uh, treated lumber. Um, actually, these are untreated, I apologize. Um, and the, the boards measured uh, 96 inches, so we just cut them into a third, so we get three uh, legs out of each one. And we're going to do that now. So um, we've got our legs cut to 32 uh, inches a piece that was a 96 inch board and we cut it into thirds uh, getting three legs out of each one and now we need to add it to our sawhorse bracket that we got from the big box store. And the way you do that is really easy. There's a tab inside here and the boards slide in and you want to make sure that that board fits flush uh, with the tab inside and do that with the other one and then screw them in.
and one leg is done. So the leg fits under the board, and you pull the legs apart, and they bite in. That's not going anywhere. So this is our horizontal board that stretches between our two sawhorse uh, supports, and we want to give us some more workspace, so we're attaching this board over the top. Uh, perpendicular to that one. I've gone ahead and marked uh, where I want the screw to go uh, and in order to get it to sit flat uh, we need to use a counter sit sink bit and the reason we want it flat is if the uh, bow moves back and forth at all as we're working it we don't want that screw to catch it and to uh, to mar uh, the back of it. So we use our counter sink bit and that just chops a little hole so that the screw fits flat. And I'll do the same thing to the other side. So I've got this top board positioned in the middle of the bottom and I'm going to drive this three inch decking screw uh, through the countersink hole that we uh, just drilled. And that's not going anywhere and the screw is below the top of the surface. So in order to create the holes for the pegs, we're going to use this uh, half inch Forstner bit. And this depends on the size of pegs that you want. We've put it a half inch uh, in from the side because if you think about it, only uh, that's going to be the center. So we've got a quarter of an inch to either side. That'll give us plenty of room, lots of strength. Here we go. I put the point on the center of that mark that I made and then make sure the drill is uh, plumb and go down slowly. I put it about three quarters uh, to an inch down and I do the same uh, on this side. You can stagger these all the way up the board so you have lots of different ways to do it, uh, but this seems to work for us. There's two of four, now I'll do the other side. So the final step now that we've got our pegs drilled and they're in is to clamp the bow. And I showed you how to do this in the beginning, but we'll show you again, it's really easy. Uh, so you just take your rope, uh, thicker is, is better, but thin will also do the same thing. We wrap it a couple times, uh, like three roughly, uh, leave it a little slack as we go, because we're going to stick a board in here. And then we just tie a square knot or whatever kind of knot you like, and hopefully this will work. This is the, the point where a little bit of, of it adjusting will come into play, uh, but hopefully we'll get it the first time for you. So we've got our three loops made and our knot tied, and now we put our board uh, through. Straighten our bow up, and then start to press down on the board. Now you see on this one we've cut a, a notch into it, and that's not really necessary, but that's just to better grip the sides of this uh, board as it goes on. So that goes down, it presses down, then we take our truck, this could be uh, a log or it could really, or a block, in this case we're using a four by four. And we just press it down and wedge it up in there, and that's not going anywhere at all. That's that's sturdy. So this will give our, our students a, a great base uh, to work on in the upcoming bow making class. If you have any questions uh, about bow making or uh, you want to sign up for a class, uh, check us out at sustainablehomestead.com. Thanks for watching.